Hey guys, welcome back to the Dumont RA, I think it's 105 project. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> so this uh, set belongs to the same collector that owns a lot of the sets I've been doing recently. And this was part of the first batch he sent me, which was mostly Predictas. And I started working on this set, but I stopped. Why? Same reason I stopped working on a lot of projects, because I needed to source some parts. Ah, if you go back and watch the earlier segments, this set uh, had a bit of a history. Um, in particular, down here, something bad happened. It's charred. There was stuff hacked in here, some, some odd parts. Um... Uh, I took all that out. I'm trying to put this back to stock. One of the things that would have been here was the focus control, which is a fairly common failure point on these sets, unfortunately. It's supposed to be a big old honking 25 watt rheostat. Well, guess what? I sourced one. They're not easy to find, and even so, this isn't quite the correct value. This is a 1.5K, I think it's supposed to be 1K, but I figure I can monkey with uh, adding some external resistors and even, maybe even as is, it might be close enough that it'll work. Um, relay. So, this set has kind of a, an odd feature, while well, being Dumont, they tended to over-engineer their early sets. There's a relay up here. And this one was disabled, shorted, bypassed. What's it there for? It's a delay relay. When you first turn on any two base equipment on, the two filaments are cold, which means they have much lower resistance and there's a big surge current. And also until they start, until they warm up and start conducting, there's no load on the power supply. So what could happen? Well, Typically use 5U4 rectifier tubes, which are directly heated, meaning they heat up a lot faster than the indirectly heated tubes throughout the rest of the set. So directly heated means there's a piece of wire that gets hot and it emits electrons directly. Indirectly means there's a filament with a cathode sleeve over it, and it takes a little bit of time for the hot wire to radiate heat to the cylinder around it, which then emits electrons. So what does that mean? That means there's no load on the B plus power supply, so it's going to go as high as it can possibly go, which can be a little too high and it can stress out components, so they have a time delay relay in here to wait a couple seconds or so to allow the tubes to warm up a little bit before it applies B plus to the tubes. It's bad, common problem, got a replacement thanks to a fellow digital electronics enthusiast so we got that uh, you know I'd honestly have to go back and look through what other problems we had but I think there was also a coil that was open I think maybe down in this area because um, I also picked up one of these and we have some bad tube sockets. So, got these. So, <laughs> it's been mostly recapped. I stopped when I started encountering these problems. So, I'm going to resume. The bad tube sockets are up in this area where somebody had recapped it a while ago with a really heavy hand and damaged some of the tube sockets. So, I got a couple of varieties. I hope one of them fit, uh, lines up enough with the uh, existing openings and uh, rivet holes that I can just drop it in there. So, let's shake off the dust. It's been a while since I worked on this. About a year, I think. <laughs> so, uh, i got to remember a bit where I left off. But for sure, we have work to do down in this area. Up in this area, you'll see a bunch of paper caps. And, of course, we have to replace those bad components. Can you run this set without the relay? Yeah, you can. I mean, obviously they bypassed it in the past and kept using the set, but, you know, ideally I'd like to get this, this guy to work. So let's get to it. Well, it wasn't easy 
In fact, I gave up when I first tried to do this, but I persevered and I got the cover off. The biggest problem is one of the screws that holds it on is right next to this transformer. Had to get needle nose pliers, some tiny ones in between these two, and work the screw bit by bit by bit. And finally, I got them all out so we can take this off and reveal the magic of the induct tuner which is three roller inductors. We have a sliding contact on the end of each one and there's another contact down below and as we change the channel dial this entire shaft rotates which changes the inductance of each of these sections which changes the local oscillator and uh, the antenna filter I imagine and uh, maybe the mixer basically a couple bandpass filters and a local oscillator to select the channel that you want to tune in and we also have this crazy looking thing at the end which is a disc several discs stacked up with a tab sticking out that's the stop so as we go from one end to the other and as we have a course and a fine tuning it should be a planetary drive here when we get to one end and we watch this all those tabs will start stacking up until we get to the end. We got one more coming around and we are done. And then we can go back the other way. We are lucky that this shaft, uh, which is ceramic, is not broken. However, this is really, really filthy. This should be gleaming metal. I believe it's silver. Uh, we got to. <laughs> We got to get in there with the deoxid and clean these to make good contact, get rid of all that green corrosion. So, yeah, we're going to go through a few Q-tips and some deoxid to get all that nice and clean and gleaming and then lube this up. The course doesn't really work. There's some gears down in there. Might be some ball bearings in here. We want to clean and lube everything up as best as we can. This chassis has been, uh, it's really filthy. Uh, I've been cleaning it bit by bit. It gets a heck of a lot better than it was, but still, um, we've got some dirt in here and there, but we are making really good progress. There we go. A <laughs> bunch of uh, Q-tips later, and it's clean and operating smoothly. I just really hope it works. I also pulled out the tubes that were still remaining in here. I pulled out most of them earlier and I tested them. Man, somebody must have really, really driven the set into the ground. For example, the eye tube that mounts up here. Not only are the targets super discolored, but this thing is just shot. It's got shorts in it. Uh, it doesn't light up. It's just dead. 6AK5 uh, that goes in here, uh, nearly dead. I'm kind of glad uh, for that because I've got a bunch and I've never, I don't think I've ever encountered any, ever used the 6AK5. So I have a bunch of new old stock ones. And similarly, the other tubes in the tuner are just, just driven hard. Everything's, everything's weak or has shorts or is, is dead. So. I think I'm just going to be putting all new tubes in this set. Oh yeah, I have to remember to replace that cap. Ah, uh, it's all coming back to me just how messed up this set is. Uh, so of course, every section of these two giant candom resistors is open. I temporarily have tacked in some power resistors here. I will uh, see if I can get some chassis mount ones or put in some terminal strips to secure these better. I finished wiring up all my uh, adapter cap um, electrolytic capacitor circuit boards. The main area of work left to do is down in here so this was a mess down here. I need to figure out what all these wires are supposed to go to. I know part of it was to bypass the bad focus control, so I need to wire this up. There should be a capacitor down here too. This, I'm not sure about. 
as memory serves, they had added a replacement part down there that's not part of the original set. I should dig out my parts chassis from the garage too, I think that'll help me out. Compare uh, apples to apples, but I also do have this Sam's photo fact with the photograph, and yeah, there's there's nothing down here. <laughs> it's missing. Yeah, that cap. All these caps are present and accounted for and have been replaced. There's a potentiometer hiding back there. This, yeah, we got to figure that out. And then there's this guy, which is the width coil that just. It's shredded, maybe a mouse chewed it up, I don't know, but I do have a replacement for that, so we will be installing it. And then this mess, a terminal broke off the terminal strip here, and that's what this mess is floating in space. Oh, but uh, there's also a lot of parts crammed down in here. Horizontal output tube, I do believe, is what's directly on the other side of this, so this is all really important stuff. The AC interlock was trashed and they just ran a power cord through it. I have replacements, I'll drill out those rivets and mount a new one in there. <laughs> uh, so maybe a rodent critter was chewing on that wire a little bit too. And this guy... Oh man. To top it all off, it's just a, it's an odd set. For example, we have a vertical position switch here. So I haven't quite doped out what that's supposed to do. It's this guy here. I don't know if it's supposed to ex Well, this has a mask on the front. It's on a porthole set, so it wouldn't be there to expand the height. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I'll either look and try to find an owner's manual or just wait till the set's working to see what that actually does. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll keep at it. <laughs> but this is the main area I need to figure out what happen down here and uh, wire it up correctly. I dug my parts chassis out of the garage. You might remember I picked up a couple Dumont dog houses at the uh, early television convention last year. One of which is completely miserable and all in pieces and that's where this chassis came from. And boy I'm so glad I have this because I can see now that there probably was a power resistor down there, but I have to be careful. I just realized this is the earlier version. It doesn't have that tower for the negative bias supply. So there's going to be some differences, but because I, I, I looked at my reference photos of when I took this set apart, and uh, they had they had hacked in a power resistor here, and that, I'm sure it was to replace this. And those two wires I was wondering about, they go to one lug of that, and then the other goes here. And see, they had a problem with these. That's uh, well, these are a little bit different too. This one has an extra tap, but regardless of the version, it's a common failure point. Looks like a critter might have been chewing on this one too. Possibly I could salvage that with coil, but I'll go with the uh, Merit replacement one I picked up. I hopped onto Mauser and ordered up five new chassis mount power resistors, all of which are rated for higher wattage than what's currently in there. Those will arrive in a few days. Meanwhile, we will continue on. Now there was one other power resistor lurking inside the high voltage box. But this is good! <laughs> uh, even if it wasn't, I think... Uh, I, have, yeah, I know I have resistors on hand. I cobble one together because it's just so often bad. I, I keep a few handy, but that that actually does measure good. So uh, we'll leave it alone. I will do some a little bit of house cleaning in here though, and the dust things, and of course replace the missing tube. Back to the patient here. I flipped chassis 180 so I get uh, get at things from a different perspective, particularly the width coil. I had to remove a screw from the top of the chassis so I get it so we can replace that and I can get a better look at that relay that needs to go. Uh, order for the power resistors has been placed. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I think I can sub something in along here. Look through my stash, see what I got because I'd like to power this up sooner than later because Man, <laughs> yeah, a bit of a minor miracle if this thing actually fires up after all that it's been through. So we did power it up ages ago, 
with just just the filament uh, tube filaments and they lit up so that was a good thing and I measured the secondary voltage of the power transformer but we've never actually applied power to any of this so yeah the main thing I have left to do now that I have this good reference and realize what happened here we can get that done get that coil replaced I'll leave the relay bypassed for now and uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping I can try powering this up tonight if not tonight probably tomorrow well here's another bit of luck actually probably not luck just <laughs> something I ordered a long time ago and never got around to using so the one resistor that's completely gone this area that's all charred I'm sure the existing the original can dome just got completely annihilated and roasted well it's uh, should be a 1.25 K 20 25 watt resistor well, hey, I've got a 1.2K 50 watt chassis mount power resistor. I probably ordered this years ago for my Crosley 407, something like that. It's a clone of this, and I, I never got around to working on it, so this part's probably been sitting in my bin for years. It's exactly what I need. I'm going to reuse one of the existing holes there, and if you ever need to mount one of these, don't make the dumb mistake I've made in the past, which is to lay it like this and line up and drill the holes because it needs to mount like this so I took a scrap of paper and located the holes and then punched it through so I can get the reverse so we line up with that and we need to drill a hole right there and I've got some silicone heat transfer compound I'll smear underneath that so between that and these other ones I dug up and temporarily tacked in I think we're good with that um, Slowly but surely making progress. Got the whole horizontal output stage rebuilt. New linearity coil installed. Knocked out the busted AC interlock. I'll be installing a new one there. Got my new 50 watt power resistor mounted. I just need to sort out the last few wires. Focus control has been installed and wired up. Rest of the power resistor should be here in three days. All right, back top side now. Just about done putting together a good set of tubes. And I cut a length of new high voltage wire. I'm gonna feed that in here. Now this has the old Dumont type of high voltage connector, the non-standard just used on, I think a 12 JP4, something like that. Well, I want to use my TUS CRT, which has a different type of connector, so I will either transplant this guy or maybe this crude type they used in the late 50s into the 60s uh, and replace this whole thing, clean this up, put the cover back on, so all that's well under hand, but there is something else we've got to deal with. That's a speaker. The owner of this set it's looked high and low for a very long time and you can't find the speaker that came with this now I got a junker doghouse at the uh, ETF swap meet I guess it was last fall but the speaker that came with that was trashed as well and here it is but at least it's something now it has a torn cone but I think it's salvageable the spider is good, the voice coil is good. Just gonna use the old Eileen's tacky glue and, and uh, reinforce all these tears here and then make a patch and patch that up. The bigger issue is the output transformer. It's open on the primary. It looks like somebody uh, tried to find a break and they failed and uh, so did I. So what are we gonna do? Well, I just happened to look around the workshop and I found this which, at least DC resistance wise, is very close to what I think that's supposed to be and it's exactly the same size. So we're going to try to resurrect this speaker and give it a shot. Okay, I think we are ready to do an initial power up check. Got this replacement resistor all wired in, I sorted out these wires, some went there, some went there, some went over there. Uh, I think I got it right. 
relay is, is bypassed as it has been. Um, we populated all the tubes except for the I tube. I think it's a 6AL7 goes in here. Pretty sure I've got some somewhere, but it's not something I use very often, so they're really packed away. But we can run the set without it, not a big deal. Uh, we got a replacement linearity coil. I replaced the AC interlock. I'll dig up a cheater cord. There's a power up. I'm going to pop out the two 5U4s. Just to make sure the power switch works and the filaments light up. Then we'll put in the, the rectifiers. Alright, so first power up. No rectifiers. Here we go. Excellent. We got our two little pile lights lit up here. And yeah, the two filaments are lighting up. Well, at least some of them are. Let's check. So reduced lighting here. Can't, there's a few of these are metal tubes, so I can't tell on those. Uh, and let's see, finally, the damper tube. Back that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything is looking really, really, really good. Cool. Now we got power switch, it's good now. Yeah, this set draws a lot of power. <laughs> About one and a quarter amps just for the tube filaments. Oh, and of course I got my test CRT in place and I uh, rigged up a different high voltage lead for that. Okay, let's pop in a couple 5U4GBs. And then I'll tip this on its side. I'm going to rig up my voltmeter. What should happen is I turn the set on, all the tubes should warm up. There's a lot of tubes and it should drag that B plus down. It's not doing anything. Now there is a rotary switch on the front. And I notice that some of these connections go to these powers just just go to that switch. It must be a mode switch. Let's look at the front here. Yeah, phono. It's like phono FM TV. So I bet when it's in phono or uh, FM mode, it's cutting juice to a lot of the tubes because of why power the t TV if you're listening to a phonograph. So let's try rotating the mode switch. Oh, control. Alright, so that was phono, then I think we're in FM now. Drew a little bit more power, so maybe that's uh, some of the tuner stuff kicking in. And now, oh, well, there we go. That makes sense. <laughs> We have a raster. Oh my god. Focus control works. Wow. Okay, let me uh, let me flip this down so you can see what I see. Oops. So let's leave this on for a second. Flip back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I go into FM or phono mode, the raster disappears. But there's two positions. I wonder if there's one. F Sometimes sets have two positions. Oh, that turns the dial lamps off. Yeah, I think we discovered that way back when I first turned this set on. All right, let me flip this down so you see what I see. Man, it's insane how big this power transformer is. Oh, you know what? I knew I was going to forget something. I knew it. I knew it. I forgot that stupid cap and this vertical riser. All right, we'll get to that soon. But first, oh, let's power this up again. Oh yeah, now it's getting toasty. <laughs> I can feel the chassis warm here where the chassis mount power resistor is, that big 50 water. Okay, here we go. Let's see, that's, that's power. So we got two dial lamps here, come on. There's that ticking sound. I think that's the 5U4s warming up. Those are used and I haven't checked them. Maybe they might not be the healthiest tubes. Okay, sorry, I think we're in, f I left it in phono mode. Okay, phono mode, FM mode, TV mode, we have a raster. Yeah, it's off center, it's doing crazy stuff, but the focus control works. There's brightness, this is contrast. Of course, we got tuning. If we had a speaker and hooked up an antenna, I should be able to get FM radio in here. If I got one more on the mode, Dial lamps come off. 
Because, yeah, I imagine if you're watching this set, it'd be kind of annoying to have these light bulbs on all the time. So, where are vertical and horizontal hold on this set? Are they all in the back? They are. Jeez. Uh -huh. I've operated one of these before, but. There is no horizontal. Oh, yeah, there. <laughs> okay. So vertical hold is on the back, and horizontal hold is a coil that's a vertical coil on the back. So Dumont engineers um, must have been thought highly of themselves or designed a great set that does not need horizontal or vertical hold controls on the front. That's a little unusual. There are centering controls on the back too, which may get this down. Let's see, vertical center. Oh, that switch on the back, I was wondering that toggle switch does, it's a vertical centering switch. What an odd thing. Well, let's see if we can reach around those. Let me back and get to that. Let's switch where are you? Oh, it's the other side. I'm curious what that toggle switch actually does. It moves the picture down. <laughs> and whoa. Okay, that control is nasty. It needs a little cleaning. That's the vertical centering control. I, yeah. There we go. I did say they have to be a little uh, okay, get some quirks worked out of the set. I've never seen a set that had a switch that would move the picture down like that. But cool, cool. Uh, I guess we could finish this off by uh, actually feeding a signal in. Okay, feeding a signal in channel 3. And it looks like there it sort of kind of wants to do something. Around three on the tuning dial. So that horizontal hold, hold coil in the back it does have a little knob on top that you can turn. So that'd be like your horizontal frequency set. So turning that. It's definitely doing its thing and changing horizontal frequency. Question is, will we be, will we be able to lock? Almost sort of kind of something there. And contrast, yeah, it definitely increases contrast as I go left and right. So tune it in better. So we go with just the vertical hold too, maybe. Kind of sloppy. Not on the lock. This is about as close as I can get it. Should be a circle on the screen. <laughs> oh, geez, maybe the tuner is just that. I saw this on some other sets I've been working on recently. When things aren't working right, I get this crazy squiggle pattern. And yeah, it doesn't change. As I change uh, different patterns in my pattern generator, so that's not where that's coming from. I mean, it's not receiving it properly.
Oh, maybe this tuning dial is just way the hell off. Because I'm like all the way bottom down. It seems like something's starting to come in. So let's try like channel 5. I was on channel 3. No, we're not quite done yet. I looked at how the horizontal AFC lock circuit works. It uses a 6AC7 reactance tube and a 6AL5. So I did a simple thing. This set has several 6AL5s. I swapped two of them. That guy and that guy. These are the two tubes used for the uh, horizontal sink. And that seems to have fixed it, which means one of those 6AL5s has got to be a little wonky. So... We'll replace that, um, but now now we have a stable image. And uh, let's see some of the test patterns. There's crosshatch, multi burst. Now, part of the reason it's a little fuzzy is well, there's a few reasons. One, I don't have the shield back on this input tuner, I don't have shields on these tubes. And you can see just by bringing my hand over. Uh, it definitely has an impact, so we want to get shields on that. But also, turn this set off. Uh, it's how these uh, Dumonts have the signal come in. They don't have a 300 ohm twin lead inputs on the back typically. What they have is a 75, oh, well, actually, they get 72 ohm RCA type jack for the signal in. But my F connector will not fit onto that, so I just have it rigged up with alligator clips now, which is all going to introduce all sorts of noise and bad stuff. And to make matters worse, one of the leads is snapped off. So we need to reconnect that up. We need to rig up an adapter for this. Uh, let's see, I think I might have some. What we want is yeah, something like this. An RCA 275 ohm, so we can pop that guy there. And then if you use a converter box or something, you don't need that 300 ohm 275 ohm gizmo. One of these, you can just use your cable directly out and go into that high-end set. So yeah, even way back then, they uh, they had this they, they coax. That goes right into the tuner. So doing all that should help. Now I posted a, a photo saying one of these things is not like the other. So this is the video IF here. And then we have the slugs for you know, doing the alignment. This guy has a screw on top. I really don't think that's original or correct. The parts chassis does not have it. It has one like this. So I'm thinking maybe it got broken. Somebody jammed a screw in there. I played around with turning it a little bit left to right, and it did affect the picture, so that's something we want to be aware of when we get a little bit further with this side and we're trying to get the best possible picture that that might be something we want to maybe swap out a slug from another set or something like that. Possibly it's original. They made various versions of this chassis. I've never seen a flat-headed screw in one of these coils before, so that's why I really don't think it is. Uh, the thing I was reach running and adjusting on the back, that is original, and that's that's kind of quirky. Typically, to adjust the horizontal frequency, it'll be kind of a recessed control you need to put a tool into to adjust it. But remember, they call this the horizontal hold control, and this is meant to be user accessible. So you reach in here, and yeah, you rotate that. That, that is your horizontal hold, and the vertical hold is this pot back here. So. They really did not intend those to be adjusted very often, is my take on all that stuff. So on the front, we just have brightness, contrast, volume, mode, and, and tuning. Right, that is going to be it for today.
tonight. That is going to be it for this installment. When we pick up a few things, one, I forgot about that control. i got to look up what that does. I think that's the EGC delay, which might also be affecting our image quality. We want to button all this back up. I want to recheck some of these tubes. We want to install that relay. We want to replace this cap, which I keep forgetting about, which could definitely be affecting things. Button the high voltage box back up. Possibly swap out that flyback. Put in the full size CRT. All sorts of fun stuff coming up in the next installment. And hopefully we'll find an iTube. Thanks for watching.